So in order to add like a section cut through this, um, we can do that from a floor plan view. So I'm going to go to a plan. If you got to go, you can take off. Um, so here I'm just saying like level one floor plan. And if you go to view, you'll see you have a section option. And so once you hit section, it goes into this mode where you're drawing a section. And by default, we're doing a building section, not a wall section. We'll do wall section later. Um, and that's also how you can do a detailed view. So I'm going to do building section. Now you're going to draw a line in the direction of the cut that you want. And you'll see it's going to draw a line and it'll have the arrow showing you which direction you're going to be looking. So I'm going to click and drag this way and then click there. And now it's created that. So you can then leave it. You can keep working on something else. And anytime you want to go to that, you can select this. If you adjust that, that's how far you can actually see in the section cut once you go to it. So if you actually go here and double click on like this, what this is showing you here is what section is that and what sheet is it on and what drawing is it on that sec on that sheet. Since it hasn't been applied to one yet, it doesn't actually have one. So if you right click on your section, you can hit go to view and then it will open it up. And then you can see some stuff in here. And just like we did before, you can go to the visibility graphics and we can clean this up to make it read a little bit better. So we can go down to walls, override, so that these show solid. We could do floors, so that those show solid. And actually, I don't want to do black. Let's try solid fill, but now let's give it a color. So let's try this like dark gray color. Let's say OK. And then now let's go to roof, where we cut through a section. Solid gray there. Gray. And then floors. Override to be solid gray. Okay. So now you can see that, but you're still looking a little bit flat. So I think on the section it's kind of cool to add shadows because it helps give you depth. But by default, the shadows kind of are really hard to kind of read what's going on. So you're going to want to go into the graphic display options and adjust how much you have on the shadows. So it's under lighting. But you can lighten them. So right now it's like at 10. Let's try like 15. And you can actually get something that looks pretty good. And then you can try looking at I'm using hidden line because I kind of like the clean look. The different levels of detail. So notice in coarse you don't see some of the columns. And then medium you see some more. And then fine I don't see much of a difference there. But it definitely adds some to it. And then here I can see I'm cutting through the windows. But I haven't made them display cut. So if I go back to my visibility and graphics overrides. Um, let's go to Windows, and where they're cut, let's try solid red and see if that looks good, just to see something different. <laughs> For a reason it didn't. Um, sometimes they do that, so what is this? It's a window. Okay, so go silent. So
So you can kind of tell and that's showing there. Let's see if we can get a thicker weight. Sometimes the line weight doesn't actually change. It depends a lot on your scale too. But anyway. Oh, it didn't do a solid fill, it just changed the lead lines. Right, because this doesn't have a fill. So if you look, that doesn't exist there. So that just has like a line. But you could apply black. To get it to look a little darker. Well, it's not much different. So that's just more options that you can try. Um, so you can hit OK. And then, your question? I do. Mm -hmm. How uh, invisibility graphics, how do we get rid of the uh, grid lines for the section? Well, I'll put that down back, but if you want to turn off your section lines. Oh. So those, so if you don't want to see those, so those are column grids. Yeah. So we would look for here, so you can go to grids. Mm -hmm. oh. You're kidding, right? Because I couldn't see grids. Oh, it's annotation category, sorry. Yep. Okay. So if we move this over, you can go down. Grid, and you just uncheck it. Or alternatively, you can pick one of them, right click, and you can go here, hide and view, either by element, category, or by filter. And then you can also get there. So override graphics in view is the exact same thing as going to the other one. So if you look override by element, it's going to bring you here. But that's going to be element specific. So you can, just like we've overridden all of these apply by category. You can pick, let's say I wanted that floor to be a different color now. You could do that. You, you go here and you go override graphics by that specific element. And then you can do like cut pattern. Right now it's by category override, but you could do solid fill, apply, and then color red. Let's just see, apply, and see we'll make just that one. So if you're doing like diagrams or something, you can do it that way too. So you can apply like a general kind of filter to it, and then you can go back in. So you actually do have a lot of control. It's not as straightforward as just clicking on it, um, but it does give you something. And then if we wanted this to apply as a template, so say we cut another section going in the other direction, Let's go here, and then um, let me take one of these sheets, our fake mechanical sheet, and let's name this um, A402, and then drop here, view section 1. So we've got this guy, and now that I've placed it on A402, if we go back, look, it's drawing number one on A402. Oh, yes. It filled it in for you. Yes. So now if I make another section in this direction, oops, I went kind of at an angle. Let me delete that. Section here. So this one doesn't say anything. And if I go to that section, you can see it's still with the old lo lo look. And if that's not what I want, I want it to look exactly like my other one. The easiest thing to do, especially if this was on the same sheet as the other one. Mm -hmm. So let's go to that sheet now. And let's rename this. So look at here, it has unnamed. But if you go here and you say rename, and you say like, let's call this one building sections. It just renames it everywhere. Um, here I can drop that one on there too. So under sections, 
I'm doing this the other way so you see both ways of doing it. You can drop that on here. And now this is drawing number two. And see how it snapped? That's telling me these are going to line up. And then I can grab both, holding control, and now I can move them together. And see this is drawing one, that's drawing two. And there you can see the call out for section one and the call out for section two. So if I go now back to the nice one that we fully detailed, where's that at? Probably just went right past it. There. So here, what I can do is view template, create template from current view, call this one building section 01. And then see it appears there. And we can just say, OK, nothing changes here. You apply that one to this view template there. And then now, if I go, you can even apply them on the sheet like that. So right now, there is no view template. But if you just go here, building section 1, boom, and it matches. And the other thing that's neat is I can now edit this view template. So let's say here has this. I can say, you know what, I don't want to see the section callouts. So what is that? Model annotation. So it's an annotation. So you go edit, and I don't want to see section. So we go down to the S. So you have section, and then you say apply, and you hit OK. OK. And now both of them lose it because they have the template applied to them. So you could have 50 sections, and they would all immediately change and be exactly the same and coordinated. So that's where it saves you a lot of time. Imagine you had like a 20-story building or 